one in building a compensation plan is job analysis, the systematic process of collecting information that identifies similarities and differences in work. Building a compensation plan is a simple seven-step process that will ensure your compensation plan is internally aligned, externally competitive, and well-managed. The first functional area of building a compensation plan is internal alignment. Internal alignment refers to pay comparisons among jobs or skill levels inside a single organization. Internal alignment ensures robust job analysis and job evaluation are completed and appropriate pay policies decisions are made by the organization. So let's take a look at step one. Job analysis is part of the first functional area of activities in internal alignment. Job analysis is the systematic process of collecting information that identifies similarities and differences in work. The outcome of job analysis is job documentation. Job analysis requires a high degree of coordination and cooperation between human resource professionals and people managers. The assignment of responsibility for job analysis depends on who can best perform the various parts of the process. In general, human resources and people managers have the following job analysis roles. First, let's look at human resources. Professionals conduct the job analysis process. They draft job descriptions and specification for management review. Periodically, human resource professionals review job descriptions and specifications, and these professionals seek advice from outside sources for difficult or unusual analysis as needed. Now, people managers. Managers complete or designate staff members to complete job analysis information as requested. They also review and maintain the accuracy of job descriptions and specifications. People managers request revisions to job analysis as jobs change and they serve as subject matter experts or panel members for job analysis led by the human resource function. Careful job analysis is well planned to ensure a successful outcome. That's a useful job description. I recommend a simple five-step cyclical process for job analysis that begins with planning, ensures proper preparation in step two, supports the completion of job analysis, and develops great job descriptions as well as ensures updates or review and feedback as necessary. First, plan the job analysis. Prior to the job analysis process itself is the planning done to gather information about jobs from managers and employees. Probably the most important consideration is to identify the objectives of job analysis, which might be as simple as updating job descriptions or as comprehensive as revising the compensation programs for the organization. Whatever the purpose identified, the effort needs to support of top management. Number two, prepare and introduce job analysis. Preparation for job analysis includes identification of the jobs to be analyzed. Next, we review organizational charts, existing job descriptions, previous job analysis information, and other resources. This includes identifying those who will be involved in conducting job analysis and the methods to be used. A key part is identifying and communicating the process to appropriate managers, affected employees, and others as necessary. Third, conduct the job analysis. Data about jobs are collected using various methods based on time and resources available. Once data from job analysis are completed, the information should be sorted by job, organizational unit, and job family. Step four, develop job descriptions and job specifications. Document the process. At this stage, the job analysis draft job descriptions and job specifications. Generally, organizations find that having managers and employees write job descriptions is not recommended for several reasons. First, it reduces consistency in format and details, both of which are important, giving legal consequences of job descriptions. Second, managers and employees vary in their writing skills, and they might write job descriptions and specifications to reflect what they want their professional qualifications to be, not what the job requires. However, completed drafts should be reviewed by managers and supervisors, then with employees before they're finalized through the human resource process. Finally, step five, update. It's really our cyclical process of maintaining and updating job descriptions. 
Once job description specifications have been completed and reviewed by all appropriate individuals, a system must be developed for keeping them current and available to employees. One effective way to ensure that appropriate reviews occur is to use current job descriptions and specifications as part of other HR activities. For example, Every time a vacancy occurs, the job description and specification should be reviewed and revised as necessary before recruiting and selection begins. Similarly, in some organizations, managers and employees review job descriptions during annual performance reviews. Job analysis collects information about what people are doing in their jobs and can be gathered in a variety of ways. Traditionally, the most common methods have been observation, interviewing, questionnaires, and generic information available through ONET, an online database of jobs. Sometimes a combination of these approaches is used depending on the situation and the organization. With the observation method, a manager, job analyst, or individual engineer watches an employee performing the job and takes notes to describe the tasks and duties performed. Use of this observation method is limited because many jobs do not have complete and easily observed job duties and job cycles. Thus, observation may be more useful for repetitive jobs and in conjunction with other methods to verify information. The interview method requires a manager or job analyst or an HR professional to talk with employees performing each job. A standardized interview form is used most often to record information. Both the employee and the employee's supervisor must be involved to obtain complete details of the jobs. Sometimes a group or panel interviews are used. A team of subject matter experts, or SMEs, who have varying insights about a group of jobs is assembled to provide job analysis information. This option may be particularly useful for highly technical or complex jobs, since the interview method alone can be quite time-consuming, combining it with other methods is common. The questionnaire is a widely used method of gathering information about jobs. A survey instrument is developed and given to employees and managers to complete. The questionnaire method offers a major advantage in that the information about a large number of jobs can be collected inexpensively and in a relatively short period of time. However, the questionnaire method assumes that employees can accurately analyze and communicate information about their jobs. Using interviewing and observation in combination with questionnaire methods, analysts can clarify and verify information gathered in questionnaires. A variety of resources to help job analysis are available from the U.S. Department of Labor. These resources have been developed and used over many years by a variety of entities. Functional job analysis uses a competency approach to job analysis. A functional definition of what is done in a job can be generated by examining the three components of data, people, and things. The levels of these components traditionally have been used to identify and compare important elements of more than 120 jobs in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. ONET is currently the main DOL resource available and provides employers with a wide range of useful items. The ONET database now contains data on more than 800 occupations classified by in industry. Included in occupational categories are the following, tasks statements of importance, relevance, and frequency, abilities, training and work experience as well as education, and interest in work values, work styles, and job zones. ONET can be used in several different ways. For example, one way is to see what abilities are needed for certain jobs. ONET also now contains a dictionary of occupational titles that has hundreds of job descriptions already written and available. In summary, ONET is a database of worker attributes and job characteristics to describe jobs and skills workers need to perform them. It can be accessed at www.onetcenter.org. Job documentation, or job descriptions, are the product of job analysis. A job description is a summary of the job. Often, templates are used to streamline the development of good job descriptions in an organization. These templates should contain four core elements of a good job description. They're shown here. First, demographic information, which contains job titles, reporting structure, FLSA status, and other basic information about the job. The purpose statement is a concise and brief description of the reason the position exists. 
key result areas, which are sometimes referred to as essential functions of the job, are short and concise statements that describe the essential functions of the position. And fourth and finally, job specifications are the knowledge, skills, and abilities, as well as the physical demands and work environments required to perform the essential functions of a job. Now, go do great job analysis that builds even better job descriptions.